Hello everybody, Brent Mix here, Macho Wrestling 101. Welcome back to week 16 of the Monday Night Wars. Another edition here on the WCW side. This is January 1st, 1996, so happy new year for the WWF and WCW. January 1st, 1996. This is New Year's Day. This is the 18th episode of Nitro, but the 16th week they go at it in the wars. One another reason they're too it's too off is because last week Nitro went on the air. Raw wasn't on the air, so I didn't count that as a week in the wars. So I skipped a week. That's why this is the 18th episode of Nitro and the sixth just but just the 16th week because there was also a Nitro on on September 4th where Raw didn't go head to head. So those two I didn't review, but I let you in on what ha I'll let you in on what happens uh, last Nitro where we didn't review it and this Nitro we did. First of all, I won't make you wait for the ratings. Last week, Nitro drew a 2.5 when Raw wasn't on the air. And Christmas Nitro. Uh, they they failed to beat the WWF this time. The WWF came in with a 2.6. Uh, Nitro came in with a 2.5. So it wasn't good enough uh, this week. So all time, the record is Nitro with 7 wins. WCW Nitro with 7 wins, 7 losses, and 2 draws. Because Raw has 7 wins as well. First, I'll go over what you missed last week. I didn't review the Xmas Nitro, like I said. Uh, Randy Savage took on Ric Flair for the world title. Savage won by, by disqualification, so Savage kept the belt. But Starcade was the night before this Nitro, and, and on that show, Flair regained the WCW title and became a 12-time champion. So this is the Nitro that drew a 2.5 and lost to Raw's 2.6. Commentated by Steve McMichael, Eric Bischoff, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Again, Nitro and Raw are seven, seven, and two. They both have tied in the in the sixteen weeks of the Monday Night Wars, and this is the sixteenth week that they've gone head to head. I only review, as I said, when they go head to head. So let's get to the action from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, on New Year's Day, nineteen ninety six, live on TNT, the night after Starcade, where it was Japan versus USA. All right, opening contest is Randy Savage versus Arn Anderson. Double A opens up the year in 1996. Savage asks for a match with Anderson after he blamed him for the nights for the week the week before when the Horsemen attacked them. Savage came out all business. He pointed to the ring, pointed to Arn in, in a sense, and saying, "Let's go." Orn clobbers away. Savage fights back, throwing Arn out of the ring and a double axe handle to Arn. Head first into the steps. Bischoff spoils the Raw Bowl at the same time. There's a Raw Bowl going on, Super Bowl for Raw. And he says the Smoking Guns won that, so you don't want to have to watch it. Interesting considering Raw won this week in the ratings, but Bischoff gave away the, ra the results. Savage with a reverse elbow arm then focuses on the arm of Savage. It's bad. He torqued the left arm, and then uh, he came out down with a double axe handle on Savage. He went for an arm bar on the Macho Man. He untapes his wrist tape. Macho Man on the end of a chicken wing armbar by Anderson, using the rope for additional leverage when the ref would look away. Savage tries to fight back, but Arn is astute in his dissection of the Macho Man. Savage brawls back with rights in the end and boots up in the corner against a charging Arn, but Arn hits a DDT. Savage then puts his leg on the ropes to break the count. Macho Man knows back to Arn and gets the three count at 8.04 after he uses knucks of his own from his own tights. So a good match here between Arn and Savage. I give it two stars and three quarters as Savage defeats Arn with the, those brass knucks. Benoit and Pillman come to the ring and try to get revenge on Savage, but they, but they complain to Randy Anderson, the official, that Savage cheated, but the result is still the result. Next up, we got another horseman in another match, Chris Benoit, as he takes on Lord Steven Regal, who has Jeeves by his side. Jeeves is the manager of the Blue Bloods, Robert Eaton and Steven Regal. So Jeeves is with Stephen Regal to take on one of the horsemen and Chris Benoit. Benoit and Regal lock up, but Lord Stephen Regal with a nice takedown. Regal tries a test of power down on the mat with the wrist locks. Benoit kips up and headbutts Regal three times. Then Benoit went after Lord Stephen Regal with the chops. Regal then hits a front face lock and, a and then puts Benoit down on the mat where these two guys love to battle for leverage. Whenever they go at it, it's always a vicious war, but they always battle wrestling-wise with amateur holds. Benoit with an arm ringer to Regal who flips and then locks on an STF, a step over cross face maneuver. Benoit's head is down on the mat. Regal with stiff a European uppercut and then the southpaw and Regal connects with lefts and all sorts of uh, European uppercuts in the corner. And then a clothesline attempt as did Regal who hits a Northern Lights suplex to Benoit. Beautiful. 
Benoit with a hard shot back. Regal does as well as Benoit goes down to the mat as Regal hits a side suplex. Benoit kicks out and hits a German suplex, throwing Regal into the corner. Setting him up up top with the Regal elbows out, Benoit sent flying to the canvas. He, he comes back with Regal on his shoulders and slammed to the mat hard by laying back. Benoit with a diving headbutt, but missed the Lord Stephen Regal, who then delivers more lefts to the head of Benoit, who Regal has in a pile driver position, but Benoit counters it into a tombstone pile driver of his own as he landed on his feet, and then Benoit hits a pile driver tombstone to Regal. Benoit then elevates himself over to the top rope to the floor with a crossbody attempt, but he eats the concrete floor as Regal moved out of the way. That would give Regal the win. Pinning Benoit after he missed the crossbody to the outside, landing on the floor. So Regal got the win at 542 after Benoit knocked himself out. Two and a half stars there between Benoit and Regal. Uh, it was a great match, but only five minutes, 42 seconds. Or I would have given it more. Mean Gene talks to the horsemen. Pillman and Arn join Benoit. Pillman in a black trench, long black leather trench coat says, he yells at Benoit and Arn. He, he says, you guys have lost back-to-back -back matches to Savage and Regal, respectively. Pillman makes sure everybody's on the top of their game despite the losses. Benoit says the only way anyone beat him is luck. And Arn says he, they're, still, they're still in control. So Pillman accepts it. The Dungeon of Doom, Zodiac, Giant, and Sullivan try to run to the ring to try to get to the horsemen. Jimmy Hart goes wild trying to protect them on the outside. Lex Luger and Sting take on the Super Assassins 1 and 2. The Pitbull wanted to talk on commentary while this was happening. The Assassinates dom dom dominate Luger and Sting for the first half of the match. Benoit questions what the motivations are of Luger in, in totality, what, who he's hanging out with. He's best friends with Sting, but he's hanging out with Jimmy Hart. Luger gets the hot tag and takes it to Super Assassin 1 and 2 with the torture rack while Sting gets the other assassin in the Scorpion Deathlock. And in the end, at 5.52, Luger and Sting win the match, a, a one-star and a quarter match. Mean Gene then talks to the Giant, the son of the quote-unquote Andre the Giant. Jimmy Hart says he realized a lot with Hogan flying with him over the years. Jimmy Hart says he's always going to be around winners, the Giant. Giant talks about how Hogan hit him with a chair and how his time is coming to an end. Then Hogan challenges Flair for the world title in the main event of Nitro. Flair comes out first, even though Hogan's... Or even though Flair's the champion, he comes out first because Hogan has to be last. This is the same thing that happened at WrestleMania 5 when he fought Savage Hogan. Hogan and Flair square off. Two of them, the 80s biggest names. It's safe to say they are the two biggest names of the 80s. Squaring off in the mid-90s, the first show of 1996 for the world title. Um, they start with a test of strength. Flair battles back with chops in the corner. Flair with another chop and then striking right. Then Flair's chops have no effect on Hogan as he shakes his head no. Flair looks worried and he puts his hands up in a begging position. Uh, Hogan then... Uh, uh, this could be the third loss for a horseman tonight because Benoit and Anderson both lost. So if Flair loses, that's three horsemen in a row. Flair then drops the, drops the leg, very formulaic. As good as Flair is, Brett was right when he says, if you've seen one Flair match, you've kind of seen them all. Brett told different stories in each match, but nonetheless, Flair is still great. Uh, either way, a figure four to Hogan near the end. Heenan says, Hulkamania is dead. The the maggot of the South comes to the ring, says Bischoff. Flair distracts Hogan, get the upper hand. Flair then with a standing suplex and a two. Hogan begins to Hulk up. Then Jimmy Hart and Arn Anderson come from behind, and Anderson nails Hogan with the knucks, but he just missed. Or no, he, you know, he nails Hogan with the knucks, but Hogan gets right back up and shakes his head and says no. Hogan then gets a hold of the knucks, and the ref re goes for the DQ at 7.55. He gave the match two stars. Flair keeps the title, but the Horsemen and, and Savage and Hogan go at it after the match. The show ends with Mean Gene interviewing the Mega Powers. I like this after-hours type of interview segment. They do post-show with the wrestlers, so it's not just wrestlers beating on each other and then it ending. Hogan and Savage says they want Arn and Flair next Monday night in the 17th week of the wars. They didn't say in the 17th week of the wars. That's what I'm saying. So week 16, last week Nitro did a 2.5 when Raw wasn't on. This week they do a 2.5 to Raw's 2.6, a loss of 0 0.1. So now the record is 7 wins, 7 losses, 2 draws for Nitro against Raw. Quality-wise, I give it 6.5 out of 10 last week. I give it this a 7 out of 10. The wrestling was pretty good on this show with the horsemen dominating the show, wrestling-wise. So thanks to everyone who's watching these reviews. I archive the Nitros, I archive Raws, and we'll see you next week for the 17th Nitro. For the 16th Nitro, they lose by 0.1, and it was a 7 out of 10. I'm Brett Mix, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.